Good day guys, I've had a few requests to do a comparison between the PNSO Triceratops and the Eofauna. I normally wouldn't do a video just for that, but, but it gives me an excuse to look at the Eofauna, which I didn't review. Now since I got it later than everybody else, there just wouldn't be any value added by then, since you've all seen it. Still, it's a really good model and it does make sense to do a comparison, so here we are. For reasons that will become apparent, it's not a straightforward contest and not as easy to score like with the W Dragon versus the Namu Allosaurus, so I won't. Instead, I'll opine on a few aspects and that hopefully will help you to decide. Accuracy The great care taken to incorporate the science behind the PNSO model has already been described in that review. As for the Eofauna, that's easy too, since there's no argument about the pedigree of the team behind it. I really like it when a model is based on a specific specimen, and we saw this with the Wilson T-Rex based on AMNH 5027, the Borealopelta of course, Parasaurolophus based on the injured ROM768, PNSO based their Triceratops on AMNH 5116, and as for Eofauna, it's MOR3027, and this is actually a very unique specimen. Triceratops has two accepted species, Horridus and Porces, believed to be part of an energetic lineage. But the Eofauna represents a still unnamed species sharing characteristics of both. You'll see that the Eofauna here has a very particular set of horns and that's the defining feature of MOR3027, nicknamed Yoshi's Trike after its discoverer, Dr. Yoshi Katsura. It has the longest horn cores of any Triceratops discovered, 1.15 meters or 3.7 feet. Now imagine how much longer it would be with the keratin over that. And this is nicely displayed here. Do I dare say they were still pretty conservative about the keratin? Since there's yet no species name, the placeholder Triceratops SP is what you'll see written when referring to this. So this is a plus if you want a Triceratops that's different from anything else currently on the market. The frill of the Eofauna is shaped more like what we're used to seeing. The epoxipitals, however, are likewise fused and flattened as proposed by Horner and Goodwin, just like you see in the PNSO. The limbs, the toes, the body are all believable in both. In general, there's more thickness in the limbs of the PNSO. Yoshi's forelimbs were not found, but my image of Triceratops limbs are these, and I've always imagined the overlying muscle giving it a meaty thickness. The eofauna legs are slender, almost spindly, and intuitively don't look robust enough for the weight and activity of the animal. Still, I'm sure the eofauna team know what they're doing, so that's probably a personal choice. Detail The scales are a lot more differentiated in the PNSO, with more relief. In the eofauna, it's less in your face. Now this isn't laziness, as one thing I appreciate about Eofauna is their willingness to err on the side of less detail given the scale of their models. You can appreciate the texturing that immediately calls to mind the lane specimen. In general, the scales both appear to be sculpted to a believable size. Now one thing to note, the flat color and the less sculpted relief in the Eofauna can make the detail hard to see. In the PNSO, greater relief plus better paint application, including dry brushing, really make the detail sing. My Eofauna is the dominant version, so someone with a cryptic version could comment on whether this is true there as well.
color. Eel Fauna offers two color variants. In my personal opinion, the cryptic is hideous. So I got the more conservatively painted dominant version. But here too, there are choices I don't like. For example, here in the shoulders, you actually see a nice gradual fade. But then here in the belly, the tail, the face here, it's really abrupt. And even though I don't like the patterning in the frill, I find it more acceptable given its advertisement potential, but it's still not worthy of this sculpt. Now what's puzzling is, if you look at Eofauna's last dinosaur, um, this Atlasaurus here, now while realistic in its plainness, it cleverly creates visual interest with a blue head. Now look at the gradual blend of colours here. And these very subtle stripes even have that pigmented look I like in more expensive models. I really was hoping to see this standard continue with their Triceratops, but this isn't the case. The PNSO, while also going for a plainer colour palette, created depth in that plainness with their paint application. One word of commendation, however, the horns. Eofauna has done an incredible job with the paint on the horns. Now this looks real, lived in, with signs of wear and use. And as you can see, it easily matches the PNSO. And that's really sad because it highlights the poverty of application in the other parts of the trike. Pose. The pose is an area where each is a winner in its own right. On one hand, you have the Charles R. Knight vibe from the PNSO. And for me, this simple yet iconic pose is huge, especially if you grew up with those old picture books. And that's really the beauty of Charles R. Knight's work, able to capture life in an animal without resorting to contorted poses or dynamic impossibilities. On the other hand, you have this very dynamic pose from Eofauna. Alone, it looks like it's engaged in a threat display. Very alive, very nice. But what's even more exciting is if you have two of them. Now, being able to lock horns, you have a lot of possibilities because of this clever thing that Eofauna has done. This off-footing here. And because of this, whichever angle you have your trikes locked together, it will look perfectly natural, dynamic, and intentional. An important consideration is that as much as I love the Charles R. Knight pose of this Triceratops, it is looking down. So it does limit to an extent at which level you can have him displayed. On the other hand, with the Eofauna, it's looking up, or perhaps straight ahead and therefore it matters less at which level you display it, whether eye level, above or below. So that gives you greater flexibility in where you put it. And I think that tips the pose in Eofauna's favour. Price. And finally, we get to what is for some the tiebreaker, and for others the overriding decision maker, the price. Now, I pay almost the same for PNSO and Eofauna, so for me it's a draw. However, I'm aware that many of you are from the EU and the States. And in the EU, factoring in the VAT, I believe you have to pay about 65 euros for the PNSO, and the Eofauna would be about 25 euros. In the States, Eofauna is about US $30 if you get it from Dan's Dinosaurs, and PNSO would be $60 across the board. Now, in that situation, I can understand how everything that can be minimized for you, including shipping charges, supplementary material, packaging, and so on, you want minimized. You really only want the models themselves. It's sad when extraneous costs have to come into the decision-making process. And that's where I hope this video can help. 
Now, some of you may still decide to get the PNSO, and others may decide to get the Eofauna, and then maybe use the money you save on a repaint to the exact color scheme you want. These are excellent models of two different species, both in excellent poses with good science behind them, and with sculpting done in two different styles. And each is very good quality. In either case, you will have one of the best Triceratops ever made in recent years. I'll see you soon in another video.